Hi, I'm Andy McCulloch. I'm one of the solutions architects at Ultima in the Modern Workspace team. And this is Windows Virtual Desktop Demystified. So some customers are confused as to what actually is Windows Virtual Desktop. So the intent of this is just to give you an overview of what is Windows Virtual Desktop and what makes up the constituent parts of it. So firstly, Windows Virtual Desktop is a Microsoft Azure platform service which allows users to access applications and desktops hosted in Microsoft Azure. And that's an important consideration is that the resources have to be hosted in Microsoft Azure. The platform service includes capabilities including brokering, web access and gateway services. So all of the constituent parts required to provide remote access to workloads running in Azure. The platform services included at no additional costs. There's no specific cost allocated for the platform service, but for usage of the Windows Virtual Desktop platform services, you require certain licensing entitlements to be in place. So most subscription-based Windows licenses and remote desktop services CALs with software assurance, depending on the workload you want to deploy, will entitle you to use of the Windows Virtual Desktop platform service. Second to the platform service, you have Windows Virtual Desktop entitlements. So these are benefits associated with Windows Virtual Desktop that you gain through ownership of licenses that would entitle you to use Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, now, this includes features such as uses rights for Windows 10 Enterprise Multi-Session in Microsoft Azure. So again, that particular operating system variant is specific to Microsoft Azure. It gives you free extended support entitlements for Windows 7 and 2008 R2. So if you have any legacy workloads which you need to continue to support, then if you host those in Microsoft Azure using your Windows Virtual Desktop entitlements, then you would be entitled to receive free extended support updates. You also have an entitlement to reduced VM costs for WVD workloads. So this uh, goes into if for any workloads that you're deploying under those entitlements, you're entitled to a reduced cost, which we'll go into shortly. So first thing we want to have a look at is Windows 10 multi-session. Now, Windows 10 multi-session is EULA restricted to only running Microsoft Azure. So this is a variant of Windows 10 Enterprise, which is only able to be run in the Microsoft Azure platform. It's only available if you have WVD benefits through Windows based license entitlement. So if you have a Windows subscription license, so a Windows E3 or E5 or M365 E3 or E5 or some education licensing, which is also included, then you would be able to leverage Windows 10 multi-session. Uh, it is not available for customers who have WVD entitlements through remote desktop services CALs, unfortunately. So Windows 10 multi-session fundamentally enables multiple users to share a single Windows 10 instance. So this capability previously was something that organizations gained through providing user desktops based on server operating systems using remote desktop services or terminal services. So one of the interesting changes is that with Windows 10 multi-session, there is no requirement for an RDS CAL in order to leverage the multi-session capabilities. So you can provide users with a native Windows 10 experience without having to run user sessions on a server operating system to get that multi-tenancy in that instance. So one of the main benefits of having multiple users on a particular session is the enhanced density of users. So if you have users where they have potentially lower resource requirements, then you could potentially have larger instances with several users on a single Windows 10 instance, both sharing the resources that are available for that particular instance. Windows 10 multi-session is available from Azure Marketplace, so it's currently the only place that you're able to obtain that from as it's an Azure specific operating system. Uh, you have variants of Windows 10 multi-session available both with and without Office 365 included in the image. So if you have a requirement for deploying Office 365, you can just choose Windows 10 multi-session with Office 365 included. And later versions uh, do include the FS Logics agent as well, which again can be one less component you need to worry about deploying into your corporate build. 
a really interesting aspect of Windows 10 multi-session is that it does include fixes and optimizations that are specific to virtual desktop usage for Windows 10 Enterprise. So there are enhancements that are present in the multi-session OS, which are not present in the standard Windows 10 Enterprise media. So as a recommendation, if you're going to be deploying any Windows 10 workloads in Azure, it would be recommended to leverage Windows 10 multi-session, even if you're not going to make use of the multi-session capabilities for that OS. So even if it's going to be a one-to-one, -one, you'd still be better off making use of the Windows 10 multi-session media. So one of the other things we talked about was cost. So this is a really interesting benefit from WVD entitlement. So you may be familiar with the Azure cost calculator. So it's just a website that you can go to to understand what your Azure costs are going to be for a particular workload. Now it's been made more apparent in that calculator in uh, recent years that there are discrete elements of the costs that you incur for running a particular instance. One of the things that's quite clearly highlighted now is that when you pay for a virtual machine instance running in Azure, there will be an element of that cost which goes to cover the compute for the actual instance, so the CPU, the memory, the storage, and there will be a separate element which covers effectively rental of the operating system licensing. Now, this is something that we consider quite a lot with infrastructure deployments because there can be some benefits to potentially pre-purchasing separate Windows Server licenses to gain Azure hybrid use benefits. However, uh, for desktop workloads, it's actually nice and simple for us. Leveraging these WVD benefits, whenever we're deploying a workload that is covered under your WVD entitlements, we're actually able to run that at no cost for the operating system license so when you're working out your costs for running a particular instance you should make sure that you select the as your hybrid benefit option now this basically discounts the cost of the workload so it doesn't include any cost element for the os license because as part of your wvd entitlement you have to have windows licenses available for those workloads therefore as part of your wvd benefits you can leverage that license entitlement to reduce the cost of your workload so depending on how you're deploying it if you're deploying it with partner solutions there's typically a tick box option to say use hybrid use benefits so this might also be referred to as windows client licensing but if you are using any other form of automated deployment it's extremely important to make sure that you are setting the correct license type for your workloads to ensure that you're making use of this benefit obviously it's down to each organization to ensure they have sufficient licensing in place to make sure they are not over leveraging this capability but for for WVD workloads, it's made nice and simple in that WVD workloads across the board, on the assumption that users are correctly licensed, will be able to leverage the Azure hybrid benefits for the workloads, reducing the overall costs. Now, in terms of deployment options, there's a couple of different routes that you can take. So for WVD, you have the option of WVD native. Now, this is where you'd use the WVD platform service for delivery of your workloads to users. So this is where, as we discussed initially, you use the WVD platform service. It has the gateway capabilities. It has the brokering capabilities to ensure that your users are distributed across the available workloads. Now, that is the WVD native option using all built-in components. Now, you do optionally have the, uh, the route of using a partner solution. So there are a number of partner solutions available, um, the most prominent of which being Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops and VMware Horizon Cloud. Now, partner solutions for WVD enable you to leverage WVD entitlements without using the WVD service. So there's a clear distinction there. So where partner solutions such as Citrix are deployed on WVD, it references the entitlements rather than an integration with the WVD services. Typically, partner solutions will have their own service, which they provide for the brokering, the entitlement management, and the gateway capabilities. So they do not leverage the WVD platform service. They will provide their own platform service to take care of those capabilities. But 
they can still leverage the WVD entitlements that you're entitled to based on your licensing position. So all solutions that are authorized by Microsoft can leverage the license benefits. However, only WVD native actually uses the WVD platform services. So key takeaways from this, Windows Virtual Desktop is the platform service. However, there are entitlements as part of your licensing benefits, one of which being usage rights for the Windows Virtual Desktop platform service. As part of that, there are benefits including usage rights for Windows 10 multi-session and reduced costs for workloads, as well as extended support updates for older operating systems. Authorized partner solutions, including Citrix and VMware, can leverage WVD benefits without using the WVD service. So hopefully that clarifies what Windows Virtual Desktop is, how partner solutions can leverage Windows Virtual Desktop, and what some of the benefits are of using your Windows Virtual Desktop entitlements in Microsoft Azure. If you have any questions about how you can leverage your WVD entitlements, either using WV Native or a partner solution like Citrix, please do get in touch and let us know.